All right, guys, I'm with Eric here from Full Moon Mushrooms, and we're going to show you a small setup. It's a very small setup for growing mushrooms and with hardly no space. I want to say super small. He's got a good setup, but he really? yields 300 pounds average of mushrooms a week out of this area. I think it's very impressive. It's a cool setup. And yeah. a, a lot of it he's kind of configured on, on his own. So Right, a lot of do-it-yourself stuff, homemade but, equipment, not a lot of space. But before so. we do a quick tour, um, I was just going to ask him a couple questions. First of all, when did you start getting interested in mushrooms? So I've been interested in mushrooms for about 10 years, foraging outside and growing shiitakes on logs. Then I started growing inside about six years ago and about three, year, three years ago on a commercial level. All right. And it's been a wild trip. <laughs> so, I, I mean, when you started, was it, were you like, I can make a, a job out of this or was mm -hmm. it, I know uh, it was just a hobby. I kind of worked backwards. Seeing? Yeah, I started foraging mushrooms. Then I took a little class on growing shiitakes on logs. Then I just got so intrigued about that. Like, where does the spawn come from? Where does all that come from? Then I just kind of worked myself backwards and realized like, hey, a lot of people want these mushrooms for food and medicine. And I started going to the farmer's markets and now all this, awesome. 250 to 300 pounds a week and a little space and so, so yeah, man. We're gonna check it out, guys. There's there's a few parts, and uh, he grabbed out some extra things to show. Yeah, Just come on, on in. So I'm gonna take you guys inside, and we'll see you in there. All right, so we are inside. He has a few things to show here. So this is just a commercial kitchen, and it works really good for a lab space because you got good lights, so you can clean the floor good, the walls good, and this is what I had to work with. So you'll see everything here is just kind of what we already had and just made it work around our you know, practices. But we do make all our own spawn and cultures in-house. And it starts with this guy right here. There's a tag on it. That's how we keep track of it. It's usually on the bottom, but that is a lion's mane mushroom growing on a Petri dish. And we clone our mushrooms and on petri dishes then we make liquid cultures out of them and we keep the generations low and constantly going and this is a incubated homemade liquid culture that's ready to be used you can see all the liquid mycelium on there that's just sterile water with honey and that's how we make our cultures then um, there's a lot of steps in between but we're just gonna go through the basics real quick and that liquid culture goes into um, properly prepped grain and that's how you get spawn. So this is fully colonized spawn. This is lion's mane right here. You can see it's all, you're looking for white, no green, no contamination. It's ready to go to the blocks we're gonna show you next, which is sawdust and nitrogen. Um, this is the lion's mane spawn. And right here, um, we grow a lot of pearl oysters here and blue oysters. And this is oyster spawn. You can see how white this is and way more aggressive it is than the lion's mane spawn. But that's kind of, we grow three kinds here, oysters, lion's mane, and king trumpets. And we do all our culture work for them and we make all our spawn. And I'll show you what happens next after that. All right, so pretty cool. Here's like your early stages of life. Exactly. As you can call it there. Yep. And then let's move to there, to there. Absolutely. We'll the <laughs> yeah, let's go out this way. All right. Okay, so after that spawn is nice and ready, we move them, what people will call this is a secondary substrate. This is a filter patch bag. And this weighs 10 pounds. A lot of mushroom farms grow on five pounds or 10 pounds. You get more weight on 10 pounds. That's exactly how we are able to get so many mushrooms in such a little space. These things are ultra pasteurized. They're almost sterilized with this homemade equipment, but this is sawdust and a nitrogen supplement, about 30% nitrogen to raw sawdust. And we move a little bit of our spawn into like a quarter of a cup and they sit here and they incubate and colonize, kind of like what's going on underneath the ground. And for the mushrooms we grow here, they take about three to four weeks to colonize. And we'll show you the fruiting stage at the end, but to get these blocks sterile so the spawn can go to it, um, again, our homemade equipment, this is a boiler with a water reserve and three five, 55 gallon drums. We get 
from a place that details car and their oil comes in them. They work really good. This one's cooking, you can see. We just hold it about, about a half pressure of PSI for about 12 hours. And it's just steam. And we can put about 200 pounds of substrate in one of these guys if it's stacked, um, layered in there properly and not blocking steam. And we do this about six days a week. So we have about 100 blocks to work with. So I'd also like to say, guys, it smells pretty good over here. It does. It's sawdust. It smells like trees in the forest. It smells and pretty good. It pushes off a tremendous amount of heat. Um, this whole setup here probably only costs about $1,500 to make. Um, and it's, yeah, that's about it. It uses a decent amount of propane. So biggest cost is going to be in energy. but. That's how we do it. If you're lucky enough to live somewhere that has natural gas on it, that works the best. Yeah. So this is our sterilization process. All right, guys. Okay, so again, another small space. Those blocks I just showed you, this is where we make them in this, just this little room. And we're, when we're not making them, we're running these smaller pressure cookers to um, sterilize our spawn. That must be sterilized. I wouldn't suggest doing this at home. It's not the safest method, but this keeps uh, weather elements off the pressure cooker and wind from blowing the flame. And we are gonna make a little hut to protect that, but this works now. That spawn has to cook at 15 PSI. You can see that gauge on there yeah. and um, for three hours. And what, so, what do you have in there? What's your experiment? So right now you saw our colonized lion's mane spawn on rye grain. And right now we're doing some experiments with popcorn. Um, I've grown on popcorn before and it's worked very well. Um, reason why we're doing that is because um, the grain prices are super out of control right now and popcorn's not. And um, it's a little bit easier to prep, we're finding out. I'm just kind of waiting on to see what our fruit looks like before I change my whole system. So that's right in there is um, five bags, weigh three pounds each with um, yellow popcorn in it. This one actually has rainbow popcorn in it. We can't open it up now because it already finished cooking, but you know, <laughs> it's popcorn. You can, so you can start that process on rye, oats, millet, popcorn. I've seen people do it on rice. Um, for commercial level, oats and rye berries work very well. They're very nutritious and pretty easy to um, prep properly. All right, pretty cool. So we got some experimenting going on. Always Along experimenting. His, his business, he's always experimenting, which is good. So maybe yeah. we'll see some Rainbow popcorn mushrooms. <laughs> Rainbow popcorn lion's mane. So this is our smallest room and the most um, difficult to work in with our space, but this is um, what I call incubation or colonization room. And we keep this room around 65 degrees. Airflow is super important in it. Um, you can, and there's fans on the floor blowing air up. There's two air conditioners in here. And these guys are just colonizing. And I'll show you, these are, these, are four days old so far. So you can start seeing the mycelium leap off the grain spawn I showed you. And you go, that's yeah. what we wanna see. This is where most of my problems always happen. Um, you would see green. Usually the um, contamination that happens with this is trichodermia. And that's something you don't wanna see. You're you know fighting for the mycelium to win. So that's four days progress. Um, this is about two week process. You can just see the mycelium digesting those, moving through the bag. For the mushrooms we grow, again, lion's mane, oysters, <coughs> excuse me, and king trumpets, they take about three to four weeks at this stage to finish growing. And it's best to have your block about 100% colonized. This one will be ready next week. You can see it was started on 612, so it's about at its four weeks. And it's about, you know, 95% there. We would fruit this, this is an oyster, but it's better to wait till they're 100% colonized. So they're all in here. Like I said, the room's super small. A lot of our racks have wheels um, to move around. There's about 600 blocks in here at a time. So they're pushing off a lot of heat. It goes um, quite a bit back there, guys. There's a lot of... 
Yeah, some airflow here. there. Yeah. yeah, it's weight. It's a lot of weight in here. Uh, what I was telling Nick is like we run these air conditioners until it gets about into the 20 digits and stays there in the winter. Then I can finally switch over to heat. But these guys are um, cooking and breaking down things. And if you put a um, thermometer right in the middle of these guys, it would be about 75 degrees or 80 degrees sometimes. Um, and again, we use all 10 pound blocks. It's we, like your compost at home, guys. If you got a pit, you can see the steam coming off sometimes or- Exactly. It's hot in there. Yep, they're working. So this is, um, I spend the least amount of time probably in this room. They just sit here and do their thing. They don't need light. There's a lot of old information out there. They need light to incubate and colonize, but this is exactly what's happened underneath the ground. So mycelium just running across. You can even see how sometimes they start their little circles on Petri dishes, or you see a fairy ring outside. You can see that's a like perfect, you know, mycelium print of a um, king trumpet. So cool. That's about There's that. lots of different stages in here, guys. There's some that are pretty much ready, and then there's some that are fresh. Exactly. So, yeah. So again, with bags in here. Yeah. So we kind of pull by date. You know, yeah. 100 blocks go in, about 100 blocks come out, and that that's how we get about 250, 300 pounds of mushrooms a week. So it's all about bioefficiency, and we'll show you that in our grow rooms next. All right, guys. On to the. Yeah. beautiful mushrooms where it actually, the process yeah where it happens so you can see we don't have a lot of space this is the room we were just in the colonization room and that room typically should be about six times bigger than our outgrow building which is super small because these guys when you see these these guys come out of their bags in two weeks opposed to these guys sitting here four to five weeks so again, just showing the space as we don't have a lot, you can still do that. And this is the fruiting rooms or outgrow rooms. We have them broke up into two sections. Um, basic four, element, um, four vital things here that are the most important is temperature control, CO2 drops, humidity, and a little bit of light. So when they come out of that colonization room, we drop their temperature and we open up their bag. So all the CO2 is coming out of their bag and now they're getting oxygen. And so the CO2 drop, temperature drop, they think they're reproducing and they start outgrowing. So from this stage is about, when we move them from our incubation room, it takes about two weeks to a full grown mushrooms, like more like this size. This guy's pretty much ready to be harvested. We just had a big harvest this morning. I should have waited, but um, these guys have probably been back here for about 10 days. Lion's mane are a little bit slower than the blue oysters. These guys are usually done at um, 10 to 12 days. Um, I like to keep, they will grow at warmer temperatures, but we keep this room around 55 degrees all year round. It's nice and cool in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like double insulated and um, temperature, these guys are so um, sensitive to temperature. Um, you, you can see them grow so fast when it gets a little bit warmer or colder. But again, it, they, you grow nicer mushrooms, nicer colors, more dense mushrooms, and when they grow slower. Like I said, they will grow at 70, 75 degrees, but also opens up for a lot of other bacteria to happen in here. So um, it helps keep the room clean at a lower temp as well. So we have all our, that's why we can get so many mushrooms, because we have our racking set up right. You, it holds three 10 pound blocks, and we used every space in the room, and so that's what happens in here. Like again, temperature, CO2, oxygen from the top, CO2 out from the bottom, homemade humidifier. I can show you how this works real simple. Here's your CO2. Here's this um, humidifier. Yeah, five disc fogger for this size room. Super easy to um, inquire. And then a waterproof fan. And now they're not running so much this time of year because it's been so humid here and rainy. Um, but they run more in the winter. I almost have to fill these every other day in the winter. And the electron most electronics are on the outside of this room, so it's on a humid stat. We like the humidity to be around 80 to 85%. And yeah, I'm just kind of manipulating like how they live outside. Pretty cool. So well, I'll show you the other one on the other side. So what's kind of going on the outside, like I said, temperature is the most important thing. And an easy way to get around that is these cobalt units. We have 
one on our walk-in cooler and both our grow rooms. And all it is is a little device that gets the air conditioner to drop below its lowest manufacturer setting, which most of them come at 60, 61 degrees. So that's, um, they're really efficient. Saves you a lot of money with compressors. I like to use these. These do get ruined in a couple of years from spore intake, but they are kind of disposable, but way cheaper than actually having compressors and that kind of stuff. So we have our, there's another one here for this room. That's an older cold bot. I've had that for seven years and it's still holding up. This is their newest version. But um, again, temperature, temperature. And this room, we keep most of our oysters in, which is a good time for them. You can see the really happy, cold pin sets. If, the, if it wasn't so cold in here, those things would be more like gray looking oysters. So dark blue, our restaurant customers really like the presentation of that. And we also keep our um, king trumpets in here. They like it extra cold. And these guys are um, top fruiters, opposed to the side fruiters over here. So. so you get one of the bags like we shown up at the front. At the beginning of the video, you guys it's seen there was- A spawn bag. Colonized spawn bags. Mm -hmm. So these are basically just the bigger one of those smaller ones you guys were looking at. Yeah, kind of that one spawn bag you saw, we can inoculate or move to 10 of these blocks. So you can see it's like a quarter cup to half cup of spawn to 10 of these. So you can see how this just keeps expanding. We start with a Petri dish with just a little wedge of a Petri dish to a jar, then a little bit of that liquid to a spawn bag, then you can keep expanding it. That's what's really cool about the process of mushrooms. Like you don't need to have a lot. You can just, once you know how to do the, um, all the little text right, you can just keep expanding it. So this room was set up mostly for top fruiting things, our king oysters, but we're gonna redo it like the other one. I built this room before I knew as much as I did now, like six years ago, so well, you I wouldn't suggest this kind of racking. Between the side fruiting and top fruiting, what you mean by that? Like the So yeah, the, so you can see the oysters are on the side, the lion's mane are on the sides, and so we just cut the bags for the kings. Here's some pins. We, they would not grow out the side very well. So we, when you cut the bag open like that, usually what we do with the oysters and the king, um, lion's mane, we tape the bag over and we cut a little X in here and that's where they come out at. They're gonna grow towards the oxygen. But if we did this with this one, fruited it like we did an oyster, it'll come out of its hole, but it'll be this stunted little things. These guys like to grow up on the top. These guys like a little bit higher CO2. So actually, a little trick is like with this plastic around here, it is creating a little CO2 barrier, its own little micro environment in there. And that has helped, that's why they're up higher. Um, and also in here, guys, you can see the different sizes of them. And mushrooms do not take a long time to get to a big size. Right, they don't. And that is, I should point out, that is a second flush block. When we have room, we can harvest, this would be like more of a first flush. And if we have room that week, we'll keep the block around for a second flush. And, and that's what you're you seeing here. You to them like the flush too. So a first flush, it, so when we bring the blocks down there for the first time and cut the hole, the first mushrooms that are coming out are gonna be the, mo the biggest ones because a, a lot of that water from the block and energy is going to the mushroom. So we call this the first flush, that's the first harvest. But this block still has life in it. And once you pull this off, you can keep that again for a second time, a second harvest will come out. And that's sometimes what we call a second flush. It'll be a little bit smaller, but this is a great example of a second flush. This guy, we, we just draw some lines on our blocks. So we, if we run out of room, we know what wants to go into the compost bin. So the second flushes will be the first to go. And that, you can see the difference. That's the first from when the block came down. Um, and here's a little guy. So it's worth keeping. We, we get maybe sometimes a quarter to a half pound, but we might as well keep them. And if you have the space and a lot of home growers or hobby growers, we'll keep them around for third. They say the size of the block, you should get half the weight. So these are 10 pound blocks. So the whole life of this box, if you keep it around long enough, you should get about five pounds. Um, then it's gonna use up all its water and dry out. But usually, you know, after the second flush, you're gonna be dealing with 
they can contaminate because you're also providing a perfect environment for other bacteria to grow with, you know, um, humidity and some temperature changes and stuff like that. So we hang on to them as long as we can. You might as well, the work's already done, so you might as well get some extra weight around it. And once again, guys, the, there is a lot of cooling. Before, yeah. like, because I've known about mushrooms a bit and watched, like, a lot, and, but before I, like, come here, I didn't realize the temperature. Yeah. I always thought it was cold, but not, you know. They you love cold, cold weather. And you could talk about, like, the cold weather, what it does to right. them. Right. Well, the colder weather will make them grow um, more dense, so you get more weight and better color, and it's just overall better mushroom. They cook better. When they're, you know, like these two guys are really, um, I mean, that is solid. It is not, and if it was really warm in here, that thing would be, you know, more water and the quality wouldn't be there. I like growing more in the winter. We just put a little space heater in here on a thermostat and we keep these rooms around actually like 50. I've had things grow very nice in like, you know, 47, 48 degrees, but sometimes I can't have them sit around that long because I got to move them out for sales. But that's why you see more mushrooms in the fall when the temperatures really drop. Um, there are tropical mushrooms that people grow, like pink oysters, gold oysters that require warmer temperatures, but um, I don't, these ones I think taste a lot better. And again, less problems in colder temperatures with other bacteria, they're enemies. So. All right, so you harvest them. What do you, do you use a knife or do you just? Actually, I, I'll harvest one for you right now, man. So I would let this go a little bit bigger, but this would be good for your video, so. Well, you can let it go. No, it's fine, man. See, all we do is twist it off. Now, I would, the health department wants you to use gloves, and I usually do, but that's all it is. And now there's the first flush. You can see how pretty this mushroom is, and we're gonna yeah. keep it back for a second flush, and we'll, I'll mark it later, you but. Can show the undersides. Yeah, you can see all the gills, and um, a lot of people ask about, like, you should have a mass down in here and spores in the lungs. That is a problem for really big fruiting rooms, but I never had. I only wear a mask down here when I'm spraying bleach when we do our big cleanings, like, once a month. So this mushroom right here, I that's can tell, a, probably weighs about two pounds. It's nice. That's and, a big mushroom, guys. Yeah. Well, a cluster. What do you call it, a cluster? Well, I guess you could call it that. It is, yeah. It, yeah, it definitely is a cluster. Well, you guys got to see in here. That's very cool. We can take so, him to the walk-in cooler next to yeah. show him what or I harvest today. Or you store it. something like this until he sells or... Right, exactly. You know, he keeps again, other stuff, so... Yeah. All right, Absolutely. we'll show you guys up there. Okay, so again, another um, homemade thing is our walk-in cooler is on another cool block, but this air conditioner is way bigger. Um, this is 100 square feet, and that's 220. So it keeps it pretty cold in here. We're keeping it, it says 37 right now. It's, it's, it's definitely 37 in here. Mushrooms guys. like cold temperatures to store too. Um, again, homemade harvest totes. These are some of the lines made from this morning harvest. I put about 10 pounds in each harvest tote. The restaurants use these and give them back. Um, so we just, you know, sometimes they clean them for us, sometimes they don't. I do, you can see this is lines, they're, um, exhaling gas so they're building condensation so usually after the, the next day after the harvest we wipe these down best storage is a brown bag but these work good for the restaurants because they're reusable and our orders go out like every couple days so here's some other harvest totes of some blue oysters that were harvested today so you can see them all in there usually we have a lot more in here um we do store our blocks in here before they get inoculated just because it's a safe place we only so we're not doing the same stuff every day they just stay in here and get cold and nev never had any problems with them they um and we bring them out to warm them up before we add the spawn and that's just pretty much our cold storage room i messed up there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so it's mostly, we usually have a lot more totes in here to harvest, and we do have a lot more blocks in here by um, different days of the week, but um, we keep, yeah, it's just pretty much for our harvest. We do some other um, mushroom value-added products like mushroom jerky, and you can, I have brine made, and um, so yeah, anything cold just stays in here. This is our grain that we start our stuff on. I keep it in here just in case no bacteria. I'll show you what that looks like. This is just raw grain before it's prepped. We keep that in there. Um, here's the popcorn we were talking about. We all seen that before, but it's just 
So that's really cheaper right now. Though. It is. It's really? about, these are 50 pound bags and of each and the rye I think is around like $50 and the popcorn's around 30. I would have never 30. thought that. Yeah, really? I know. That, that sounds weird saying popcorn's cheaper right. than like a rye grain. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. yeah. So that's what it is and now. It's cooler. You, know? you could say your mushrooms are grown on popcorn. Yeah, I know. I can't wait so, to see some. I'll have to touch base with you after we see some of the fruit um, that comes out on the popcorn. I always tell people like it's working very well in the spawning stage, but you don't really know you until you, you actually know, see the fruit. fruit. Most people, and I've done this through the years where I calm down, where you'll see something work and you'll just run with it. But you gotta like keep testing your methods over and over again before you get, you know, cause I've ended up in a lot of issues with that and throwing a lot of stuff in the dumpster. But yeah, we get out of here. It's nice All and right. pretty cold in here. It is, it is cold in here. That's All what right. we want. It's eight, like 80 degrees outside. Right. Well, so. we'll, see, we'll see you guys somewhere else. Somewhere. All right guys, so we're at the end of the process. Back around to the front of the building. Yeah. So and the you can explain what this is here. So after we're done with the mushrooms fruiting and they're spent and that's all done, this is just a compost pile. I got a lot of people coming to grab these every week for their gardens. They really are truly amazing for growing gardens and stuff. I've heard of them reviving people's apple trees, dying rhododendron bushes. It's really good compost and we have so much of it every week. I wish more people would get it. If we don't have, unfortunately, it just goes in the dumpster because if it sits here, it attracts rats and snakes. And um, that is a great, extra benefit of mushroom farming. It's still mycelium and when you move it into another thing, it'll attach itself to that and keep growing. So. I have used mushroom compost and it works very well, guys. I can confirm that. And he's gonna start getting it, so you should <laughs> do some experiments with it. Yes. It's great and you can start seeing like, this my people making like little brick walls at a oyster spawn. And, and is it rice possible for it to still fruit mushrooms i mean it, they, it could you'll get some surprises over. yeah you yeah. could you're not going to get much out of it but you you'll could move like it there's people you could actually take this um sawdust and move it into logs we talked about log cultivations now you wouldn't want to do that with king trumpets or anything but um, you could actually plug logs with this sawdust and um, move that mycelium keep it rolling and once it gets a new medium with new nutrients it will um you can do that too so very cool yeah, there's a, that's so, that. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, thanks for stopping showing down. Showing me around. And where can they find your shop? So we um, we mostly sell wholesale to restaurants, but we do sell some of our um, dried products. We have dried lion's mane, and we do make a lot of mushroom jerky, and that's on our Etsy store. So full moon mushrooms on Etsy. And if you're local, um, see us at the farmer's market or stop by here, you know. We really don't have a storefront right now. There will be links. I'll put the Facebook link and the Etsy link. We ship, so. you know, we just don't ship the fresh mushrooms, but we are yeah. mostly just fresh mushrooms. A lot of breweries and CSAs use our mushrooms. And we're going to be open up to some cultivation classes soon. So I'll keep Nick in the loop with that. Okay. And I'm sure there'll eventually be a follow up here. So. Yeah, yeah, real soon, <laughs> anytime. But. All right, I appreciate it. All right, thanks, Nick. Cool farm. Very cool setup. I love mushrooms, you guys know that. Well, some of you do. You know, I've tried to grow them and whatever for, but pretty cool. I'll see you guys in the next one.